Now we get into other difficulties as well. I was researching this the other day and I found in Matthew 23, 1, that every English edition of the Bible has a math problem. Well, okay, so if we take the number 42 and we divide it by 3, we get 14, 14, and 14. And this is what Matthew 1 tells us. It begins right away with, there were 14 generations from Noah to Abraham, 14 from Abraham to David, 14 from David to the Messiah. But when you count up the generations from David to the Messiah, you get 13. Why? Because every English text in Matthew 1, 16 says, Joseph, the husband of Mary. So the genealogy in Matthew 1, in everybody's English Bible, is about the genealogy of Joseph. And when you look at Luke 3, you're talking about the genealogy of Joseph. But the genealogy of Joseph in Luke 3 is completely different than the genealogy of Joseph in Matthew 1. Well, how can you possibly reconcile this? And furthermore, the last 14 are not 14, it's only 13. So you're one short of a full generation. So how does that happen that we have this shortness in the generation in Matthew 1? Because of one word. Joseph was, yes, the husband of Miriam, but Joseph was also the name of her father. Now when you recognize that Matthew 1 is talking about the genealogy of Miriam, now number 14 is Yeshua, Hamashiach, Yahusha, he is number 14, Miriam is number 13, and Yosef, the father of Miriam, is number 12. When, when, now, you've got to you gotta recognize that in the Hebrew, there is no really a word for husband, and there is really no word for wife. What you have is Isha and Ish. So, Adam took Eve to be his Isha, his woman. And Eve took Adam to be her Ish, her man. Simple as that. So when you get into this confusion about what takes place in Matthew 1, it becomes pretty confusing. What do we know about it? We know that if you clear up the problem and you correct the language that said her man, and it turns out to be her father, you end up with 14 generations perfectly, and the lineage is one of Miriam, and the lineage is one of Joseph. Miriam and Matthew, Joseph and Luke. And let's take a look at this for just one moment. Because both of them can trace their lineage to David. Both of them can trace their lineage to Zerubbabel. Zerubbabel was the rightful king by bloodline of the house of Judah. If you recall, it was Joachim who was taken into captivity in Babylon. Joachim, there was a curse placed on him that says, No more can the house of Joachim, the stem of Jesse, sit on the throne if over the house of Judah. And so this was the curse, but the bloodline continued, and the bloodline continued such that Joseph, the husband of Mary, was the rightful heir to the throne of the kingdom of the house of Judah. And the bloodline of Miriam was also in the line that established her in the rightful line of the heritage of the kingdom. She is in this line of the stem of Jesse. So from both sides you had royalty, and to them is born this son. But the son is conceived of an immaculate seed and an immaculate egg. Because as it says in Hebrews, it says that he was without descent. So you have this immaculate conception of this Hamashiach who has a bloodline from his mother that establishes on him on the throne and the bloodline of his father which is establishes him on the throne. But he does not hold the curse of, this, of the direct DNA from Jehoiakim. 